Hello everyone, just Goran here and welcome back to another episode of Building the Beekseberge. In the last episode we laid out all of the foundations of the Elephant Valley. So let's continue with that, let's actually start building some things. But before we do, today I was actually at the Beekseberge just to take in the landscape, compare it to what we did in the last episode, make some measurements, and uh, there's a couple of things we need to adjust. First things first, uh, over here, I made the assumption that the terrain went down, down, down. But as it turns out, this crossroads over here is actually the lowest point. This path doesn't slope down, it's actually flat. Uh, the downward slope actually happens somewhere around here. So just some minor adjustments needed there, but that's something we'll have to do. Also, over here, I talked about how much I want to keep the panorama sign, even though it's not actually there in real life. I actually don't know if I talked about that, but that is a thing. This thing is gone in real life, but I want to keep it. However, um, judging by the new map that you get at the entrance of the zoo, um, this area is actually um, been picked out for a brand new thing. Uh, there is going to be a new meerkat habitat uh, and also a new species for the zoo. The bat-eared fox is going to be put in this location somewhere. And the only thing I can really imagine is that it's going to be some kind of habitat over here that has some kind of immersion effect with the savanna behind it, which is going to look absolutely amazing, no doubt. Uh, but that does mean that we're going to have to move some things around here once that gets built. Because I know I said I'm not going to update any more things that get added to the zoo because I want to finish it. But I don't know. That exhibit just sounds really cool conceptually. Uh, of course, it, it depends on what the execution is going to be, but I'm sure it's going to be pretty cool. So, yeah. I guess we have some more things to do in the future. So maybe... We shouldn't take this area too seriously just yet because it is it is subject to change. But uh, the other thing that I noticed today, which is actually going to be a really easy fix, uh, is that over here, the terrain between this fork in the road and this little bridge, uh, it slopes down. No, not even slopes down, it dips down. So basically what we need to do is just just dip it down. Just a just little a little dip, that's pretty much it. And then we need to delete all this all this old stuff that shouldn't even be there anymore. And that's that. So that's that's all that needs to happen there. But other than that, we did a pretty good job in terms of laying out all the terrain. I think I do need to make some changes to the aviary, perhaps. No, actually. I think we're just going to start building. So I kind of want to start out with this playground and this whole viewing area. Let's, let's just get started. <laughs> All right, so the playground is pretty much finished. I got all the playground equipment. I upgraded the swing with the new chain pieces. I used some of the temple pieces over here to create nice and small uh, little chairs for the swings, which I'm pretty happy with. That looks really, really good. The playground looks a little bit more dangerous than it is in real life, simply because, <laughs> because of the scale. Uh, of course, in, in real life, there's a lot more space between the playground elements. Uh, so there's less risk of a kid <laughs> running into someone who's swinging on the swings. But uh, yeah, no, that's pretty much the playground done. And I was working on some rock work for the rest of this area. But I figured we might as well do the same thing that we did with the white rhino area, where I made a couple of rock work templates uh, that I could then use all over the place. So over here, I started making some of those templates. Uh, you can see I have three of them, and then when the fourth one came around, I I, I got bored, <laughs> so I just started working with the three that I made. Um, I, I put a bit more effort into them compared to the white rhino ones because the reference does generally show the rocks being neatly stacked on top of each other. I did a little bit more effort on like making them look. A bit more properly stacked like they might actually be supporting each other and uh, the rock shapes that we have in game don't quite match the kind of rocks that they would have in real life uh, because these are less square <laughs> but i put them in over here uh, where we have more rock walls because honestly for the area that we were working in i would literally just need the top like maybe two <laughs> the top two rocks uh and probably not even that but 
I put them in here so I could do a just a test to see what it looks like and I'm pretty happy with it. It looks pretty nice. In, in real life there's a bit more nuance in the different colors but of course we're limited to what the game has so I use the desert rock to get some of that yellowness, some of that warmth and color in here uh, and then tiger rocks mainly for just for the gray base and then throw in a couple of temperate rocks just to get some color variation in there as well. And then over here for the thing above the tunnel, uh, in real life that's made out of faux rock. So I put down some faux rock, uh, the big boy, uh, which was pretty much the right shape. However, not completely the right texture quite yet. Like it's pretty good faux rock that they have in real life on this part. Like you can barely tell it apart from the actual rock wall. So I threw in some actual rocks <laughs> and that looks, um, that looks pretty good right there. Rocks, yay. <laughs> So while I was working on those rock walls, I figured I'd also do the other side of them, which in the pool yard uh, are these really ugly, <laughs> to be quite frank, uh, walls, which is these concrete slabs with this little bit of faux rock on top to make it look a little bit more detailed, but ultimately you can very clearly see it's just a flat concrete wall. So I'm not a huge fan of those. And um, they're also put on this side over here and they're gonna be in some other spots around the hyena enclosure as well. And they don't look any better there either. From a distance they're fine, but especially next to these pretty good looking rock rock walls, it's just a bit of a, an eyesore, just a bit, I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, um, things are happening and then I spend about the entire evening trying to figure out the shape of this aviary and where all the supports are supposed to go. So um, that that seems to be good now, I think. I don't know. I really wish we had satellite imagery of this area in particular. Uh, Google Maps for the zoo hasn't been updated in like three years. So part of me is kind of hoping it gets added soon and, and I will have some satellite imagery of this. That would be really great. But until then, I might actually just hold off on this honestly, but we'll see. <laughs> I, I think I got it pretty accurately now. So maybe I'll just start building. I worked on it a little bit. I, I gotta say my brain is just not cooperating with me right now. I am having a lot of trouble deciding what I wanna do. Like there's so much to be done in this area. I I don't know, my brain is just shutting down. It's like, ah. <laughs> so I just need to pick something and go for it. But uh, yeah, I worked a little bit on, on this area over here. Uh, this was a really kind of a struggle because the window pushes into the mesh. So I did like some some mesh trickery, uh, kind of like my netting tutorial to uh, get that to look decent. It, it doesn't look that great, but it's good enough, I guess. I, d I don't really know how I would improve it. Like that would be just insane, an insane amount of work to get that to look smooth from all sides. There's a lot of stuff going on here. I also don't know if I'm going to net over this aviary. I feel like it technically would be possible, but it would be lot of effort so we'll see but yeah I, I didn't really know what I wanted to do so I ended up doing some work in the Africa village over here uh, I'm these are not the final huts don't worry we will try to in some way get some of the murals and stuff back on here uh, these are just kind of plays all this to see the the size of the huts because I did go to the zoo and measure all of them um, I also put in Haribo's rock walls and other stuff in here just to get a layout down and I think I got it down pretty well right now. I think this is how it should be roughly and uh, we're able to get building the actual stuff. So with the placeholders in place, let's actually figure out how we're going to make the actual huts. So I made the placeholders using this setup over here. I have a little ruler that's made by Haribo that I could use to measure the radius that each hut needs to be. Um, they go from small to big. I actually ended up not using the small one because it was a little bit too small. I could really put a roof on it. <laughs> um, but yeah, here we have all of the placeholders and their roofs. And I've already made a more detailed one over here. It is the ice cream shop that has a nice little door, very simple patterning. There's actually supposed to be like extra ice cream and stuff on there, but this gets the point across. You can definitely see that with the scale that we're building at, it, it looks 
a little small on the inside if you put a person in, but I think it's fine. I think it's pretty good. Um, I'm really happy with it. But this, this was a relatively simple hut because it doesn't have any real extravagant murals. So how will we make the more extravagant murals on a curved shape like this? Well, let's have a look at proof of concept over here. Uh, this is the old hut over here. We've got the beautiful stork and then some leaves dripping water. Uh, the stork is gone because they, they smashed open that hole to uh, make a little shortcut through the Africa village. And um, here we have version two of those leaves and they're made with font pieces. And most importantly, um, the mural follows the curve exactly. How the hell did I do that? You might be wondering. Well, basically with my placeholder building, I counted, okay, how many limestone um, sections does this building actually have? And then I unfolded that over here. So um, we have uh, on either side of the building 11 sections, uh, which means that we can put the murals on those 11 sections and then fold it all back together. Basically, I used the mud pillars to only move these pieces by like a little bit, thanks to Freebolt, we can do zero meters. So um, because I did it this way, I can actually use these uh, gridded pieces to move them all back into each other exactly so that they all line up and I can make them into a circle again. I hope that made sense. Um, we'll probably be doing mural making live streams Probably when this video comes out, I will already have done one or two. Uh, who knows? I don't know how long this video is still going to take. Uh, if there's already a stream like that out there, I'll probably link it in the top uh, if I don't forget, uh, because then you will be able to see it much more clearly. But this technique does work. Uh, I'm able to just make the murals, make sure that they don't stick out, which would cause them to you know, stick out of the circle. Uh, and yeah, fold them back together into something that looks good. So now it's just a case of making all of these little sections, puzzling it together, and then we'll have one hut, which will probably take a long time already. And then we just have nine more huts to make, all with different murals. And oh my god, this is going to take forever. So yeah, that will just be something that I'll be working on whenever I feel like it. Uh, in the meantime, we're gonna go back to the aviary. Uh, I'm gonna visit the zoo and make some measurements, because I still don't know how it should look. <laughs> Alright, I've basically just been walking around the aviary like a dumbass and writing down where the poles are. I think I got it. All right, I have a lot more confidence in that they are in somewhat of the right spot now and that we have the right amount of supporting beams. So uh, now I'm actually really looking forward to building the aviary now that I know relatively sure that everything is, is somewhat in the right spot. All right, and just like that, all of the ropes are in. I don't think I'm going to fill them in with netting the amount of effort it will take will just not be worth the little extra detail. I think I might try to do some rudimentary netting, like just literally just flat mesh throughout it uh, to, to give you some kind of more, uh, an even stronger illusion of netting when you're looking from below. I think that might be interesting to investigate, but uh, I'll play around with that a bit. Um, I also need to put in all of the sides still, just like we did on this side. Don't mind the glass, that's just there so I can align the art shapes or the mesh pieces to the glass and then I'll just turn it into null barrier again. I don't know why I put in the curved tops, I just thought it would look funny. So yeah, let's let's do some mesh experimentation. All right, notice how it doesn't look any different. It still seems like there's no mesh here, right, from this angle, but uh, there is actually mesh there. It's super sloppy because I did not even try, but that's actually pretty great because from certain angles you will see it and it'll add that little bit of extra detail, but I did not put in any effort. <laughs> so I think that's a win-win, honestly. Um, over here in the back, I've had to angle it like super far, like this doesn't even make sense. But the reason I did that, or I had to do that, was because otherwise from back here, you just don't see it. It's just literally, if I angle this any other way, so now it's like actually angled like to the top of the thing, right? But now if you're standing back here, you only see like a very bit of the top. 
So, yeah, uh, I just messed up because I deleted that thing a second time and now I can't undo the thing I did. But, so that's why I have to angle this one quite a bit. Um, otherwise, you just, it does, just doesn't work. Logic. I like it though. I think this is actually a nice way to get the meshy feel without spending uh, two weeks or more on meshing this place. It's funny how my brain works. It's just like I start something and then I just progressively start putting more and more effort into it, even though it's not necessary. But yeah, I guess I am putting in slightly more detailed shapes for some reason, <laughs> but it's looking really good. Uh, and I like how I, I made a tutorial uh, only to then just ignore it myself <laughs> and just be like, I mean, the, the, the techniques from the tutorial still hold up, like doing it with art shapes first and then covering that up and getting some shapes right. And like the tutorial is still useful. It's just, you don't have to put in as much effort <laughs> as I did there. That That's a key park thing. I'll do that in key park. In Big back we could just, good enough. <laughs> all right, there we go. The netting is all in place and it's looking pretty spectacular from this angle and that's the main angle that I wanted it to look good from uh, yeah this totally works and oh my god they're even running this is so cool I love this mod this is such an amazing mod all right I figured it was time we start making some progress because I do want to do more than just the aviary this episode so uh, I pretty much finished it uh, we've got a whole bunch more details in here with all of these supporting cables keeping the aviary up uh, we've got foliage and just the entire interior of the aviary being done bar maybe some rocks and logs and, and things scattered on the ground but we've got a little pool over here i use some moss decals on the side to make sure that it all uh, lines up nicely with the uh, grass over here it was actually quite a challenge uh, to put it at a place where I could actually put water in it um, but it ended up working out just barely uh, it, it should actually slope down from this hut obviously um, but I, I have it sloping up so that I could get the water in but you don't really notice it too much um, and it ends up working really really well so that's cool we've got these little shelters up in the trees for the uh, vultures and stuff to sit in uh, I made these custom trees. I tried using trees that I found on the workshop. I think they were by Caesar Creates and they looked really good but they just weren't the right color and I don't know. I just wanted to get these shapes exactly uh, the way I did. The way I did it by the way is also um, pretty nice over here. We I used the, the bark pieces that we got in I think the tropical pack uh, to make the trunks of the trees a little bit thicker and then I use the African branches to uh, to branch out and get some more shapes up in these things. And then lastly, uh, we've got the little hut over here. Um, that is the viewing area. Pretty happy with how that turned out as well. Um, there is mesh in the windows, just like in real life, which is something that I don't really like. I wish it wasn't mesh, but I think there's a reason for it. I think they're also going to release much smaller birds into this aviary. So maybe having glass windows or, or something wouldn't be good for them. I don't know exactly what the reasoning is, but yeah, we also got these little booklet things with some educational stuff on there. And there's a little little telescope binocular thing for you to observe the birds uh, more closely, which I think is also there mainly for when there's going to be smaller birds, but I don't know, the binoculars in combination with the mesh, it's, it's not a great, it's not a great combination, <laughs> honestly. Let's finish up some more things over here. I don't think I'm gonna do the cables between these poles yet. We'll probably do that on a live stream because it's tedious and boring. Uh, I'm gonna do a little bit of work on the backstage over here. Just get the bird backstage in and my cat is rubbing the microphone. Always great. And I think after that uh, I will finish up the um, bachelor yard over here since we started that in this episode anyway. Cat, you're ruining the recording. Can you stop? So yeah, I'll finish up the bachelor yard since we already got started on it anyway, uh, and then we'll we'll wrap up the episode. In the next episode, we can work on the hyenas and cheetahs, and uh, some of the new elephant yard as well. All right, the backstage is done. I went ahead and just made all of it so that when we move on to the next few things, uh, we don't have to worry about that anymore. So even the hyena backstage is already 
in place over here with their back holding and their indoor holding something that's probably used to store for either food or poop or both and uh, although maybe hopefully not that close together <laughs> uh, and we got all these different cages for the birds and their indoor holding and then the inner holding of the uh, various antelope that are going to be on the elephant field and of course right after i finish it i stumble upon the website of the company that actually built this place and i have this beautiful picture of what it looks like from above uh, so I'm gonna just make a few adjustments. <laughs> and done! Just a few minor things in case you hadn't noticed. These buildings needed to be aligned, this wall needed to be diagonal, and uh, these fences needed to be slightly different, and that's it. I've also added in some more details now that I could actually see them from above, uh, but the rest we'll just tackle whenever we do the hyena enclosure, so nice! Then let's also do the same for the elephant bull yard over here. I've already done a couple of things. I've added hot grass to these trees. I added the expansion of the stall. Looks like I need to do a little more clean up on that side though. Um, so yeah, first steps are in place. So let's just do another one of those quick cuts and finish it right now. And there we have it, the enclosure is done we've got all of the fences we've got a bunch of details a feeder we've got an elephant in here uh, that's actually able to move around most of the enclosure i'm pretty sure <laughs> i i accidentally have the free build juvenile navigation thing enabled so i don't actually know how this thing would traverse uh, if it weren't for that probably a lot less well because of how little space there is between places but I'll, I'll see that next time I open the zoo. For now, the enclosure is done. Uh, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. I still need to look at the situation back here. I'm not exactly sure how old the fences go at the moment because I know that this gate is gone and it's changed for a different kind of gate, but I'm not sure what that means for how the elephants are able to be traversed between these spaces. So I need to figure that out, but for now, it's good. It's fine, we've got a cool habitat over here. I'm really happy with it. And now let's just get to making the uh, visitor side over here and get that all looking nice and then we'll be good to go. All right, there we have it. That's about as far as I wanted to get, just in time to get this video out. It's actually been four weeks since the last video and I think I'm gonna try to keep that going. A video of the Bakersberg every four weeks, not necessarily pushing myself to get anything done, but just a little progress update every four weeks. How far have we gotten with the Elephant Valley? I think progress will start to ramp up as we get further along, so should be fun. I think I think it should be doable. I do have some things going on in my life right now, fun things, I should say, <laughs> that might be taking up some of my time. So um, if, if I do feel like there's not enough progress to warrant a whole video, uh, maybe I will postpone it, but we'll just see how it goes. Anyway, for now, uh, yeah, visitor side pretty much done. Again, I, I skipped the wires because we'll do that in the live stream at some point. I also didn't go all in with the planting just yet because I want to wait until winter blows over uh, because I'll probably still be working on this by then. So I'll be able to then make some new photos uh, to see how the foliage has developed and um, make it more up to date and accurate because most of the foliage in my reference photos is very much this has just been planted <laughs> but yeah other than that we got some viewing points we got the path all correct we got the bridge with its things over here and then this awesome little fence design and not entirely accurate there should be some smaller bits of corrugated sheet in some places but um, I, I don't have anything that's small enough for that so we'll just keep it the way it is and from over here you can see the separate holding areas and you follow the fence to behind the stalls. So all looking pretty good, really happy with the progress we made this episode. We did a lot and um, yeah, can't be happier. Next episode we'll keep that going and, and make some more progress and hopefully at some point finish this entire project, but uh, that remains to be seen. So I want to thank you all so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video, subscribe to see more and new thing, join the channel if you want perks like early access to videos stuff like that yes i had channel memberships for a while but i made some changes to it recently where now all the rewards are just in a single tier the lowest one the cheapest one and now also gives you early access to videos uh, and 
some cool stuff like that. So be sure to check that out if you're interested and uh, don't feel obliged to, of course, it's just a little bonus uh, to help out the channel, uh, help me pay for zoo tickets mostly, um, but uh, that's that. So hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.